Greetings, fellow citizens. I am the Senate Dude, and welcome back to the Outer Worlds. When we last left off, we, uh... What did we do? I forget. <laughs> um... Oh yeah, we did Nioka's quest, uh, we found her people and her, uh... Her old group and, uh, laid them to rest. Apparently one of them betrayed one of the others. And, uh, a whole bunch of other stuff, you know? Wonder who's making that noise upstairs. That do do do. If I have to listen to one more bloody toss ball tournament, I will go board. mad. <laughs> or short circuit. Scheduled for right. area maintenance. Battery levels are fully charged. Good work, Sam. Thank you. Customer, this area is utterly filthy. So where did you come from? All SAM units travel fully assembled in a 12x12 corrugated steel box. No, I mean I want to know more about you. Did you know SAM units are capable of equipping regulation-grade flamethrower nozzles? Upgrade your attachment today and get to firing away! Alright, back to work, Sam. Alright. This is why I don't take him on a... on a quest with me. Yeah, let's go take a shit. Move all along. There. Um... Yeah, I need to talk with Parvati about some, because apparently I don't think I finished her quest line yet. Ow. Yo, Parvats! Talk to me. Hey, Captain. I got a thing I want to ask you. It's kind of big. Sure. What do you need? I was thinking about what you said before, after we went to the Lost Hope on the Groundbreaker. I reckon you're right. I think I'm ready to stop fretting and fussing and Ow. and ask Junlei to go steady straight out. And I'm thinking of doing it here, on the ship. That's sweet. Can I help? I was kind of hoping you'd offer. The thing is, I can't ask her over like, like this. I mean, look at me. I'm all covered in engine grease, and I ain't showered in nigh on a week. I smell like sweat most days, and, well, don't look too close to my fingernails. I was thinking, hoping, we could stop by Groundbreaker for bath supplies. Easy enough. We could head straight over. I mean, only if you're not busy. Or when you're heading through Groundbreaker for something else. You don't gotta change plans on account of me. Anyhow, next time we dock in Groundbreaker, let me know. Because I want to come with. Alright. New quest! Yay! Alright, but first we need to go and meet with Clyde Harlow. We gotta meet... The, uh, with... Uh, this is Felix Quest. Alright. We're here. Harlow's base. Hello. Who the hell are you? Hey you. Looking for something? Where do you think you're going? Uh... Felix Millstone's with me. Clyde Harlow's expecting us. Yeah. The captain said we might be getting a new recruit. That you then? Sounds like Clyde's jumping to conclusions, but yeah. I'm Felix. You're on a first name basis with Captain Harlow, huh? All right, go on through. All right, thanks, bud. All right. Got my sights on you. You're lucky that these sights aren't on you. Oh wait, they just were. Ha ha ha! All right, now let's. Who's this guy? Nice mask, man. Clyde's got himself a cozy little outfit, huh? Are these folks friendly or not? That's what I want to know. Are these folks friendly? <laughs> well, we'll find out. Can I take any of this shit? Nah, I'll get caught stealing. What's up, motherfucker? How you doing? In this door. Alright, we can take all this shit. 
Oh! What do you think you're doing? Uh, nothing at all. You're free to go. Well, oopsie doodles. How the fuck did that person see me? Oh, he's just walking away. That's nice. Alright, let's see. It's a necklace. I don't need that. Alright, what else do they got here? Alright, take all that shit. Dead? Nah, you're alive. Alright, here's Clyde. Mar Harlow Marlow. Oh. Ah, I'll get caught by the dog. Or whatever this is. Talk. Well, hey there, Hullhead. Clawed your way out of the groundbreaker at long last? <clears throat> uh-huh. Oh, sorry, were you expecting me to say something? Maybe a long time no see, or a you've aged, old man. <laughs> uh, well, this is awkward. So, you took Felix under your wing. Kept him busy. Good. Kid always needed a place to belong. He's been watching out for us just as much as we've been watching out for him. Felix's family, mister. Hear that, Clyde? I've been making something out of myself. So long as you haven't been making a fool of yourself. I'm sure Felix has no end of stories to tell of your exploits together. I look forward to catching up with the boy. Alright, so tell me why we're here. I'm working on something. Something big. Something the likes of which Halcyon has never seen. And I want Felix to be a part of my initiative. I'm fulfilling a promise I made to the boy. That one day, he and I would change the colony together. That day has finally arrived. Easy there, Clyde. No one said nothing about throwing in with you. In case you didn't notice, I'm pretty happy where I am. I'm not asking you to walk away from your captain, Felix. But neither should you allow yourself to be controlled by fear. Change is not to be feared. I brought you here because I want to know where Felix's loyalties lie. When the day of our revolution comes, I want to know that I can rely on him. Wait. Uh... <laughs> you want to put him through a test? Everyone in my crew proves their loyalty. No exceptions. Not even Felix. I want you to deal with a traitor for me. Name's Trask. Kill him, and bring me proof of his death. His ring should do nicely. What did Trask? What did this Trask do to deserve death? Ratted us out to the board. He's been an informant. Has been for years. When he realized I was onto him, he and his little cadre mutinied. Killed five of my own and tucked tail. I don't know where he's hiding, but his wife might. Rosanna lives on the groundbreaker. Last I checked. Rosanna knows my crew by name and face. But you're a stranger to her. She'll talk to you. There's more to this than you're letting on. You think so? Maybe we should have a word with Trask. Get his side of the story first. You'd be wasting your breath bandying words with that traitor. But if it makes you feel better, by all means. Remember, I want proof. Bring me his ring. I don't care if the hand's still attached. Here, my token. Think of this as my personal signature. Anyone who knows me by my works will know me by this token. How well do you know Felix? Well enough. It's been a few years, but I still remember a thing or two. You had a chip on your shoulder. You'd argue over anything and you'd never back down. What do you mean, had? And for the record, you never could admit when you lost an argument. You see what I had to deal with? There's something I'd like to ask you. Let's hear it. 
You said you were working on something big? A revolution is the work of a lifetime, Captain. I've spent my life preparing for the day of Halcyon's reckoning. Everything you see around you is the result of that preparation. A base of operations, loyal soldiers, freedom from the board's oversight. It sounds like you've got some plan to overthrow the board. Hardly. The board is rotting from the inside. Tomorrow, next year, a generation from now, eventually, the board will fall to pieces. Entropy is the natural state of the universe, Captain. All systems inevitably dissolve. When that day comes to Halcyon, we will be ready. Uh, what makes you think you're free? The skies around Scylla are curiously absent of patrol ships. It's almost as if the board's sphere of influence is shrinking. Besides, our facility is well armed and located on defensible terrain. If the board tries to lay siege to us, we'll make them pay. So you're a band of outlaws living on the edge of an asteroid. Some revolution. Not all revolutions involve bloodshed and fire, Captain. The purest act of rebellion is to live according to one's own means, independent of any masters. One day, when the board is weak and Halcyon vulnerable, we may claim a piece of this system for ourselves. Until then, we bide our time. Let's change the subject. Something on your mind? I should go. Alright, let's go. Whoops. There we go. Spacer's choice. Nothing to do but stand around and watch the That machine fun. stole my bitch. Why do we even have one of these? Because you just do, motherfucker. What do you want me to say? Alright, we're gonna go to the groundbreaker. Oh, I found a vending machine that I apparently never found before. Alright, let's go to the Groundbreaker. We've arrived at the Groundbreaker. Alright, let's roll. Are scheduled to air soon, but a scandal has All right. the league Rosanna. You mind trying to have a moment here? I'm looking for a guy by the name of Rufus Trask. Rufus Trask. I'm told he lived around here. Rufus and I are no longer on speaking terms. I don't know where he is, and if I did, I wouldn't tell you. I'm sure you don't mean that. I'm on the level you can ask Junlai about me. You're telling me you're on a first name basis with Ms. Tennyson? I'm not one of Harlow's thugs, you can trust me. Alright, I'm gonna take your word for it. Rufus is hiding out in Emerald Vale. Got a few friends with him. That's as much as I know. Got a few more questions. Please, just make it quick. You and Trask split up? That's right. Our marriage contract expired some months ago. And seeing how he's technically an outlaw, I wouldn't renew even if I wanted to. How much do you know about Harlow? 
Precious little. He and Rufus worked together on the Groundbreaker some years back before he vanished. A few years later, Rufus gets a message from an old friend. Something about starting a revolution. Something about getting rich. Abandoned his work and ran off that very day. Sounds familiar, Felix. He must have been recruiting. Gathering up his band of revolutionaries. Word of advice, kid? Anybody carrying on about a revolution just wants to sell you something. I don't know Harlow. Never so much as bandied a word with the fellow. You're better off having this discussion with Rufus. Harlow tells me Trask betrayed him. Do you know anything about that? Only that Rufus is in a bad way. He came to see me a little ways back. Said he had to go into hiding. Never asked why. He was here to collect his personals, complain about Harlow to me, and say goodbye. In that order. He didn't tell you anything about Harlow? No, and he was particular about that. Said I was better off not getting entangled in his mess. Little late for that, says I. That's all I wanted to know. I'll leave you be. Appreciate it. No offense, meant. Just been a long day, is all. Alright, let's go. All right, let's go. Uh, all right. Confront Trask on Terra 2 in Emerald Vale. We are now in orbit above Edgewater, Captain. All right, let's roll. Oh, reloading. What the fuck's in here, huh? Dead marauders, armor parts, this shit. Makeshift low pressure suit. There he is. North Gulch discovered, huh? <clears throat> Hello, Rufus. I don't know who you are or why you're prowling around here, but I'm willing to make a guess. You're one of Harlow's gun hands, ain't you? He sent you after me. That's what. That's right. Harlow said you betrayed him. Yeah, of course he did. Thing is, you and I are at an impasse. Harlow wants me dead, and I've got no intention of dying. Why did you betray Harlow? How do I know that I can trust you? Uh If I wanted to kill you, we wouldn't have be we wouldn't be having this conversation. Yeah, guess that's a fair point. Listen, I don't know what lies Harlow's dripped down your ear, but you'd be a fool to trust him. I never betrayed Harlow. Harlow betrayed all of us. The board's got him in their pocket, been paying him off for years. All the palaver about revolutions? It's a lie. You're a real piece of work, Trask. Not just a turncoat, but a liar, too. 
Go piss up a rope, kid. I've got nothing to prove to you. That's the whole truth. Harlow's just another bored asset. A two-bit mercenary wearing a dissident's clothes. You're asking me to take you for your word. Show me some evidence. Yeah, I've got proof. There's always a paper trail when the board's involved. I chanced upon some correspondence between Harlow and his employer. I don't know that it makes a difference. <clears throat> what was I to do with that evidence? Bring it in front of the board? There's no authority in Halcyon willing to take Harlow to task. <sighs> Alright. If you've got proof, let's see it. I hid my papers before Harlow chased me out. Back in the middle of the base, there's an old vent in a utility corridor. I stashed my evidence in that vent. Why would the board buy off Harlow? Because he's for sale. Anything the board can buy, the board will buy. And that includes loyalty. Harlow was a charismatic bastard. And he was ruthless. With Harlow in their pocket, the board had an informant, a pirate, a smuggler, and a gang leader all rolled up into one odious excuse for a human being. Sounds like a deal to me. What was Harlow doing for the board? Board sanctioned piracy. Harlow went after the ships the board wanted destroyed, capturing anybody the board wanted captured. If we captured you, we'd ransom you. Harlow liked to do the job himself, gather up the captives on his own ship, Vanish for a couple of days. Only that's not what happened. Harlow's been selling his captives off to the board. I don't know where they ended up. Re-education, Tartarus, maybe worse. Alright, I've heard enough. Take it, you've made up your mind. I'm not gonna kill you, Trask. But I'm going to ask you for your ring. You gonna tell Harlow I'm dead? May as well. I'm never going back to that life again. <sighs> Here, take the ring. And for what it's worth, my gratitude. Take care. Take care, friend. Alright, we need to find... We need to get back to Harlow. And we'll see if... Trask's evidence is correct. All right, it's to Scylla. Wait, Scylla landing pad. Harlow's base. Harlow's base. All right, transition to Harlow's base. Let's roll. Trask's evidence is over there. Maybe. Stashed receipts. All right. Now what? A journal. Codex. Logs. Stashed receipts. These receipts. Detailed payments made to C. Harlow on behalf of the board for freelancing services included are the names of several freighters targeted by Harlow's crew, their manifests, and the sum value of all cargo delivered to board authorities. What's the word? Trask got a lot to say about you, Harlow. Not surprised. Trask was a dead man trying to negotiate with his own executioner. He'd say anything to preserve his life. 
Dras told me you've been working for the board. That's a damning accusation. Am I right to presume you have some evidence on hand? You've been bought off. I've got the receipts. Those papers don't prove a thing. We've all done business with the board. They own the whole damn colony. Trask put you up to this. <laughs> that miserable wretch. He's trying to undermine everything I stand for. Uh, I think you owe Felix an explanation. Listen to me, Felix. Don't go jumping to conclusions. This isn't what it looks like. Yeah, because it looks like you've been taking money from the board. It looks like you sold out, Clyde. Oh, come on, Felix. We've all taken money from the board. They run this colony. I can't pay my soldiers in ideological purity. If I have to take the board's money to buy my guns, outfit my troops, and prepare my revolution, then I'll do it. <sighs> Are we done here? I've got places to be. Captain, I hope Trask hasn't tricked you into believing his ridiculous accusations. If you're willing to overlook this unpleasantness, I'm willing to take Felix into my crew. I don't know about this, boss. You've been real good to me. I'm not too keen on jumping ship. I like having you around, but it's your choice to make. Yeah. Okay. I had a good time, you know. Saw the system, got in a couple scrapes. Which is why I'm staying. You were good to me, Clyde, once upon a day. But you disappeared on me, and I've moved on. Are you sure about this, Felix? I'm not giving you a second chance. Turn me down now, and you're not getting back in my crew. You can keep your crew. I've got a family. Then I suppose there's nothing more left to be said. Goodbye, Captain. I doubt we'll cross orbits again. Level up. Let's get back onto the ship. Okay, skills. Get our skills up. All right, let's roll. All right, Felix, where are you at, man? Hey, Max. Yes? You really think we all have a purpose? That everything happens for a reason? I used to think that, but not anymore. Then, wait, why do you sound so calm? Aren't you getting annoyed? Not in the least. But I do apologize, Dr. Finch. It sounds like I have annoyed you. Fine, be that way. So, Harlow was rottener than we called Borst. Big surprise. <laughs> Alright, let's talk to Felix. Can I sit in the chair? Taking it easy? Always. Alright. We need to talk. Listen, boss, I owe you an apology. I got stupid. Clyde wanted me on his crew, and I jumped at the shot. You took a chance with me back on the Groundbreaker. 
I should have shown you a little more loyalty. Apology accepted. I appreciate you hearing me out. There was something else on my mind, honestly. I've been trying to make sense of all this business with Clyde and Trask. I always looked up to Clyde. The thought that he could be an agent of the board is just abhorrent to me. I can understand why you're upset. You feel like he betrayed you. Yeah, he did. And I'm not sure how I'm going to get over that. It'll pass. Give it time. I hope so. I don't see this one passing anytime soon. You've given me a lot to think about. I'm gonna be mulling over this whole mess for a couple of days. I'm glad I didn't go back to Harlow. I've got all the family I need right here on our ship. Thanks for your time, boss. Hey! Sanitizing within established radius. Quest completed. The self-governed perk. Alright, where to now? Oh, Harlow's emblem. Do I get to have that in my, uh... I lost Trask's ring and Harlow's emblem. Boo. Do I get to have that in my room? No. Boo. You might want to consider changing your clothes more often. Oh, shut up, Ada. What the fuck is this? Being employee of the month. Borst Factory. Signed by the Borst King of Monarch himself. Alright. Now, let's go help out Parvati. Let's go get some cleansing products. The Groundbreaker has approved our request for docking, Captain. You're free to disembark. Alright. Alright, we'll get rid of Felix and add an Ellie! Can we talk? Oh, sure, what's up? What did I tell you? Harlow's down with the man stick was just an act. No one who yammers that much means half of it. Don't sound so excited. That was Felix's friend. Obviously not. And better for Felix to know that now rather than become the next Trask. Just because Harlow... Yeah. Just because Harlow turned out to be crooked doesn't mean everyone's like that. Don't get all mushy on me now. Come on, what did we just learn? People look out for their own interests. It's a fundamental law of nature, same as gravity and conservation of motion. Amen to that. See, this is what I like about you. You may not be from here, but you fit right in. You're not working for the board out of some foolish sense of idealism. As a matter of... No, but that's not the point. You're right. The point is that self-interest is like self-pleasure. No one wants to admit it, but everyone has a hand in it. Enough about Harlow, though. Anything else? Didn't, didn't you want to talk? Oh, yeah, what can you tell me about Byzantium? It's like one of those stuffy art gallery pieces. Looks okay from far off, but once you get close, you realize it's just some mismatched shit everyone's agreed to overpay for. <laughs> Even the bribes are overpriced. So why did you leave? The real question is why didn't I leave sooner? There's all these invisible rules, and everyone spends all their energy just trying not to break them. What do you mean? I was a top-tier surgeon, but I could hardly open a pack of gauze without ten people signing off first. 
So you had to de- That would drive me crazy. Now you see why I left. People call Byzantium the jewel of Halcyon, but really, it's just paste. Everything's polished and bureaucracy. Take a close look and you'll see it's deader than anywhere else in the colony. I need a lay of the land. Anything I should know? Don't trust anyone. Don't touch anything. And whatever you do, don't show your teeth when you smile. Uh, why not? People are extremely competitive about cosmetic dentistry. It can get ugly. So, must have been interesting growing up there. Interesting like a colonoscopy. I trained as a surgeon. More my folks' idea than mine, but I made the best of it. Sounds like there's a butt to this story. Lots of them, unfortunately. I even sculpted a few. <laughs> Turns out Byzantines are more concerned with having square shoulders and a good profile than, well, anything else. I've sculpted. That's them. what I've been saying. Never mind. So, what did you want to talk about? Something on your mind? I guess you didn't want to talk. All right, let's go. You sure have seen a lot of the colony, huh, Doctor Fenhill? Ellie, and sure, but most of it looks the same from inside a ship. Sorry, Dr. Ellie. Still, though, don't you find it thrilling, being in space? Look, it's just Ellie. <laughs> I love these ca these, uh... Lemon slap. Slap your whole family tonight. This is Halcyon News. We interrupt your regularly scheduled advertisement for the following story. Do you have what it takes to defend your corporate township from the dangers of alien wildlife and the unemployed? Talk to your local manager about applying for military training and lend your life to protect the... Alright, hello, uh... Hello, Gladys. Long time Gracious. no see. I was just sitting down for tea. Alright, my engineer is looking to do some deep, deep cleansing. Wants to impress Chief Junlei? I think I got just the thing, my dear. A few years back, Auntie Cleo's put out a whole makeover kit, and I snagged a couple for myself. High-grade shampoo and conditioner, scrubby brush, a nice lotion, that sort of thing. I still got them, too. What's the scrubby brush for? Cleaning around your nails, sweetheart. Gets the engine grease out. Makes your hands soft. Most folk don't got the time. Or bathtubs for such. Me included. I'll let you have one on clearance. You want rosish, mock apple and cinnamon, or refurbished ship? You got a preference, Parvati? Oh, gosh. We never talked about what kind of smells she likes. I think pretty much every spot on Groundbreaker just smells like old socks. It comes down to what sort of intent you got. If I was looking to do a spy job over in engineering, I'd be safe with refurbished ship. Now, if I was a young thing trying to come on all precious-like, I'd probably go with Rosish. But if I was doing it for my own self, I'd pick mock apples and synthamon. I guess you could eeny miny mo it? It's eeny meeny miny mo! A lady scent says a lot about her. Ugh. <sighs> Right, let's fucking do refurbished ship. Like grit and grime covered over with cleaner, you mean? Well, that's a smell that means we're really going places. I'll just wrap that up for you, since it's for a special occasion. I'll pay for that, ma'am. Thanks for being so helpful. You're welcome, dear. Alright. Thank you, Gladys. Anytime, sweetheart. You know where to find me. Alright. Come here, Parvati. Come on. Come here. Come here. Groundbreaker's safe from melting to bits now. Lots of good people can rest easy because of you. Uh, so there's your soap. Oh, thanks, Captain. I'm gonna put these someplace safe. In her messages, June Lay said her mama used to make this dish from Monarch. Dustback casserole. Saltuna and Xenogold needle mushrooms. And then for dessert, there's a thing called, uh... 
sweetheart cake. It's made with almond paste and wax gourds. There's gotta be some place in Stellar Bay that can bake a casserole. And I heard tell there's a Rizzo's town near there called Cascadia, what specializes in sweets. All right, we'll figure it out. Thanks, Captain. I know I'm asking an awful lot, but I'm sure it's going to be worth it. All right. We need to uh, do a bunch of shit. Let's get back on the uh, unreliable. All right, where are we going? Where are we going? We're going to Monarch. First, we'll go to Cascadia. Orbit over Cascadia, Captain. All right, let's roll. Nice thing about traveling with the captain, we meet all sorts of new people. Sure. Best part is when they pay us. We never really had new folks in Edgewater, except the captain. Kinda hard to make new friends when everyone's already decided they don't like you. Could be a favor in disguise. A lot of people out here ain't that nice. Fuck. Sealed. <laughs> Alright. I'm nowhere near hosta- Who's here? Who's here? Who's the hostiles that are here? I will kill them. What the shit? Whoops. Fuck. Where 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 to go? Where do we go? Where do we go? Oh, whoops, wrong button. I, I, I wish there was a, a flashlight option. Alright. Hostiles are dead. Cascadia. Here we are. Hostile over here. Gotta be in this house. Oh, killed him in his sleep. At least he had some. At least he was having a dream when he died. Alright. Person's dead. Hello there. Aren't those cakes just about the cutest little things you ever seen? <laughs> I won't. Just, just destroy it. All right. Where are we going? Where are we going? Where are we going? Stellar Bay.
dust back casserole. Dr. Ellie, you ever wonder if maybe we got some things in common? This isn't another thing about wrenches and guns, is it? Because you're a surgeon and I'm a mechanic. We both fix things, heal them up. Hate to break it to you, but before I got to Groundbreaker, I fixed more noses than bones. Nowadays, I probably shoot more than I save. Oh. All right. Hello. Oh, first time I've been in here. Everett Gill. Good day to you. Good day. Chef Raymond. Hello. Whoa, by the stars, my poor heart. I just about pissed my jumpsuit. Sorry, didn't mean to startle you. Most people don't. Besides, this place is enough to try anyone's nerves. How's that? Where should I begin? With the oversized mantisaurs? Or perhaps the rap spewing acid at our walls? The board was right. This place isn't fit for human habitation. And I was a fool for staying. My engineers, uh... Why did you decide to stay in the first place? Sanjar, of course. He had all these glorious ideas about how he'd run Monarch. Rest periods between every work shift. No shift more than ten hours long. It all sounds wonderful. Until you realize there's only a few centimeters of repurposed steel between you and the deadliest creatures in the galaxy. Seems like you'd want more than centimeters. That's what she said. <laughs> there's truly no end to my suffering. <laughs> Ellie, what the fuck? Ellie. <laughs> Ever thought about leaving Stellar Bay? Only every day. But in case you haven't noticed, we don't exactly get ships on a regular basis, yours notwithstanding. And even if I did scrape together enough to buy passage out with sublight, which would mean reaching Fallbrook without getting eaten, shot, or dissolved into green goo, what then? Why don't you just tell me? Nothing. That's what. Because I've been stuck here running this dump of a diner for years, so even if I could get out of here, no one's gonna hire me. Sounds rough, buddy. Even talking about it has my blood pressure up. I've really gotta stop. Alright. My engineer's looking to get a dustbag casserole. Can you cook one of those? That was a real popular meal 10, 20 years back. Before the board tucked tail and ran. These days, everybody's had a belly full of salt tuna. They all want borst. And the mushrooms, well. Not many venture out of town, what with the monsters hereabouts. I can whip one up for you, but it'll cost. Here's a menu. Oh, yikes. I can't cover this much, Captain. Uh, I can cover 3,000 bits. Get started, Chef. You got it. I got all the ingredients. Should only take about an hour in the oven. There we are. Now, if you don't mind, I really need to take a leak. All right. My belly's gurgling just to smell it, Mr. Raymond. Thank you so much. A pleasure to help such a charming young lady. Oh, gosh. My tongue's rumbling just smelling that casserole. I went through Ellie. All right. All right. Here. The dust bat casserole Mr. Raymond made smells incredible. Oh, I kind of want to take a little taste, but I'm going to be strong. Now look how cute these cakes from Cascadia are. Someone even traced little hearts in them. Oh, I guess that settles dinner. Thanks for hauling me all over creation, Captain. You're welcome. Shouldn't we, shouldn't you get ready for June Lay now? Well, I was gonna, but then it hit me. I got this nice meal all planned out with music, and I got that soap to scrub up with, but I don't got nothing nice to wear, Captain. Uh, you have anything in particular in mind? I don't have a head for fashion, and I can't really picture myself in something clean and pretty. There's this place I heard of in Byzantium, Jollikers Haberdashery. I bet I could find something nigh on perfect at a place like that. 
All right, we'll swing by when we can. Thanks, Captain. I know I've been asking a lot, but you help me out every time. You're the best. All right, let's roll. Let's get back on the unreliable. Haberdashery! 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 Wait, what? Aw, oh, son of a bitch. Why isn't that quest marked? Uh... Oh, it's... That's because Byzantium's here, motherfucker. I'm dumb. We are now in orbit above Byzantium, Captain. Alright, let's roll. Alright, where to? Habedashery! Habedashery! Babadashery! Babadashery! Alright, we gotta get up there. <laughs> I've always loved that sculpture. It's an honor. And you say that. What's in here? Oh. I've been here before. Here, close the door. I love Byzantium. What's up, you fucker? With the hips. Over here. Let me take a closer look at you. Guard. All right. Now, uh, Celeste uh, Jolicoeur. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Don't speak. Hold that posture for a moment while I admire you. You have a natural contraposto, my dear. The way you rest your weight against your hip suggests a certain rugged charisma possessed only by the mighty primal and the well-traveled <clears throat> spacer. Splendid. I love it. Uh, can you tell that by the way I'm standing? Your walk, your posture, the cut of your clothes. You carry yourself with the bearing of a noble, but you dress like a barbarian. How deliciously outré! I'm Celeste Jolicoeur, and you, my dear, are exactly what Byzantium needs. Uh... It, uh, are you trying to sell me something? I'm an artist, darling, not a tweed merchant. I don't sell things. I holiday the world with art. I'm working on a new line of clothing that will shock this city to its core, and I'd like your help. What do you say, my dear? Care to make history with me? Uh, count me in. Marvelous! You and I are going to wake this city up like a cold splash of wine to the face. What I need is a survey of the outside world. What does the common laborer wear? How do the wild-eyed madmen of Monarch dress themselves? I've heard rumors, but I require samples. Also, I expect you to model for me. What's the benefit of seeing me wear it? My dear, fashion is a performance art. An outfit without a body is like an instrument without a player. I'll need you to model for me the following. The apparel of an iconoclast, the armor of a marauder, and a full ensemble of spacer gear, helmet included. And when I say spacer gear, I mean an outfit worn by real spacers. None of that garbage spacers choice pedals. No tall shoes though, I mean it. <laughs> you have the bearing and demeanor of a born model. You're going to absolutely murder this job. All right, I'll see what I can do. Fabulous. I can't wait to see what you dredge up. All right. So, um, uh, my engineer is going on a date, and she needs a fine outfit. 
You don't gotta be so forward about my reasons, Captain. Let me get a good look at you. Turn around, please, darling. My word. Such muscular shoulders. You're a vision, dear. Uh, I am no such thing, ma'am. Nonsense. You're absolutely lovely. Chin up now. I have just the thing for you. Let me do a back-of-the-envelope calculation. Materials, labor, licensing and copyright... There. Ah. Uh... Fine, 6,000 bits. Now stand back. Back, back! I'll enter the settings and get these machines spinning. You'll be broke to bespoke in nearly an hour. Oh gosh. And there we are, my darling girl. I wish you a splendiferous evening. And if you don't mind my asking, have you any interest in modeling? What? Oh, no, ma'am. All them eyes staring at me? I couldn't. No way, no how. I get scared just thinking on it. I wish you weren't so shy, my Violet. You truly are beautiful. I hope your date sees that as clearly as I. Alright. See you around. Do her quest later. Come out, come out, come out. I don't want to talk with her in there. Oh, can you believe this outfit? It's so handsome, I'm almost afraid to touch it. Well, I guess that's everything then. After all this time, I can... I just have to actually do it now. You know, there's there's a part Junlei's been looking for to fix up the air cyclers. They only carried them on big colony ships, like the Hope. Pavati, making every little thing perfect won't change Junlei's feelings. I know. For a while, it, it felt like everything I did was a little bit of help. And it meant I didn't have to ask her to be mine. Not yet. Not for real. Next time we dock with Groundbreaker, I'm doing it. I'll send June a message and ask her over. Oh, this is real scary, Captain. I'm grateful for all you've done. To the ship. Back to the unreliable. Now, hold on. What happens if we hit the wall? Most likely, the bullet will ricochet, which could be bad. Or hilarious. There's a tiny chance of a hull puncture, which would suck us into space one chunk at a time. Bad and hilarious. <laughs> Ugh. Just imagining that makes me sick. That's why we don't miss. Oh, wait, let's go to Groundbreaker. The Groundbreaker has approved our request for docking, Captain. You're free to disembark. Alright. Alright, Parvati. Alright. She's on her way. How do I look? Uh, you look terrific! Oh! My hands have finally stopped shaking. All right, all right. Deep breath. Here I go. Check in on the date. Parvati's date. Oh man, if I find them in their bedroom. Okay, no, I don't. Hey. Anyhow, so I told him, Dad, I'm a big girl now. I ain't need your help. I can do it on my lonesome. What did he say to that? Have at it then. He's probably half as tall as I was. He didn't scold you for talking back to him? Nah, he was never like that. I always thought it was funny when I get indignant about something. Then he'd watch me do whatever it was, make sure I didn't get hurt. It's been a while since we've seen June. Ow! 
I think I'll initiate an unscheduled rest cycle while you're out. Hold on, she's on a date, so... All right, back on the unreliable. Dead center. Next round's on you. Shh, the captain's coming. Put your gun away. Act casual. Oh, uh, um, yes. This'll about do. That's a might. Okay, captain, she's gone. <laughs> Did it go well? I'm near about vibrating. I'm so excited. So she got here, and after a few minutes, she said, Hey, do you have some new parts? And I was like, nah, I used a new soap. And then she just sort of touched my arm real gentle-like and called the cut of my outfit elegant. I couldn't hear the rest on account of my heart was beating so hard. Then I led her into the kitchen. I think she about cried when she saw the spread. So you laid out the meal, uh, brought June in, and started the music? She stood stock still and just said, Oh, real soft. Oh, and let me tell you, I was sweating. And then she blinked and said, Is that dustback casserole? I told her how we got Mr. Raymond to bake it for us, so it was double authentic. Made by a real live... Monar monarchian? Monarchist? Monarch person. So the meal went well, the dessert too? Well, we talked a bunch over dinner about the things we learned just through messages, stuff we repaired... How I taught her to salvage, and she taught me to build. When I brung out the sweetheart cakes, June, she got a little teary. Said she had a thing she needed to say. But I stopped her, because I wanted to say it first. I never felt so bold, Captain. All right, and? I told her about how she made me feel. Bold like I acted. Strong. Smarter and kinder than I am on my lonesome. I listed all the things I liked about her. And then she pulled out a paper and read a speech. She she talked about the things she admired about me, like my cleverness and my humor and how it made her want to be more open. So what so what happened next? Anyhow, when she wrapped up, I asked her to be my girlfriend. And Captain, she said yes! Hey! Congratulations. It's all on your account, you know. Imagine if you'd never taken me out of Edgewater. I'd have never met June Lay at all. I don't know nothing about the Vicar's capital P plan, but you've sure changed my life. So, if you don't mind, I'm just gonna head to my cabin and happy screaming to my pillow for like an hour. Hey, I got an achievement all for one! Completed all their quests. Alright, well... Let's end it by looking out the window at the groundbreaker. No. We're gonna do something better. We're going to Gorgon. Alright, hold on one second. Alright. There it is. Gorgon. We will start this quest in the next episode. And then, uh, yeah. All that. <laughs> Alright, everyone. Well, uh, we've had a great episode. Uh, thank you all for watching it. Um, we're starting a new adventure after this. And then do Celeste's little quest, but that'll come later, maybe. Alright, everyone, uh, well, thank you all for watching this episode, and I will yield the floor. <laughs>